So listen to this. Everyone is familiar with Pella, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, and Neymar to name a few. However, there is one name that is well known throughout Brazil and that hardly anyone else in the world can identify. I am referring to Denner, and each and every one of those players had his name mentioned at some point. Even Pella's very own son said that Denner had the speed and skill of Neymar, the trickery and spirit of Ronaldinho, and the efficiency of Ronaldo. We're talking about a player who impressed Maradona so much that he had to stop mid-match and applaud him. He was referred to as the god of dribbling for a reason. But as you may have guessed by now, Denner died at the age of 23, just a few days after his relocation to Europe was completed and exactly two months before the start of the 1994 World Cup, Ronaldo was the final player on the roster, but even though he didn't play a minute during the competition, it was still enough to drastically alter his career. Most people think that Denner's destiny would have been the same as Ronaldo's or any of the other players I've named if he had been present. However, during my research, there was one particular instance that moved me. I overheard someone say that parents are still naming their children after him today. I decided to search for his name in a football database, and sure enough, there were hundreds more players with that name after he made his debut for the national team, most of whom were born in the years that followed his passing. That is how much Denner meant to the Brazilian people. Those who saw him would never forget his personality. It was like seeing a glimpse of a shooting star when he played. How Denner almost ended up in jail and the first glimpse of his talent came in 1986. After losing his father, 15-year-old Denner gave up football to assist his mother with household expenses. But his hometown had a huge youth futsal competition that year. I'm speaking live on TV, and 7,000 people are in the stands for the final. There are now Champions League teams with attendance averages lower than that. The schools involved took this seriously, so they deployed scouts to the streets to find underprivileged children who would play for a few bucks. Eventually, they found Denner and offered him a scholarship. Aside from that, Denner was paid to play futsal, but he never showed up for lessons. What caught them off guard was that Denner knew exactly how good he was. He kind of just started extorting them after that, saying he wouldn't come to the matches if they didn't give him more and more money. And by the time he reached the finals, Futsal was making him more money than a regular job would ever allow him to. But soon, that would be meaningless because Denner would win every medal in honor of the competition, attracting the attention of teams like Sao Paulo and Portuguesa, his boyhood team, ultimately agreeing to the latter. However, as soon as they arrived, they saw that he had a significant issue. Denner was a homeless child, his family would watch every single one of his matches since it was the only way they could make sure he was still okay on the days he didn't even show up at home. Denner's childhood pals were into some really serious stuff, and their behavior rubbed off on him, although most people thought of him as a fairly hilarious, laid-back man. It wasn't rare to find stories of Denner stealing football boots or getting seriously aggressive during football matches. At one point, things truly got a lot worse than that when the police showed up in the middle of a training session, arrested Denner, and accused him and five of his alleged friends of armed robbery. It was released only after two days and only after the club persuaded the judge that they would keep an eye on him, but like a lot of other players, he would view this as impunity rather than a second opportunity at life, and things would ultimately become really serious once more. When he was expelled from the national team due to the media even so, he impressed two-time silver boot winner Alphanet so much in his club debut that he requested his jersey after the game. Denner said, It's my debut and you're already asking me for my shirt. These things cost like 500 bucks. Whatever the case, two years later, despite his two seasons of playing for Portuguesa, no matter how excellent he was, they were kind of broke and wouldn't even fully promote him to the first team. However, Denner staged a fake move to Belgium since he didn't want to leave his childhood club. He even drove to the airport pretending to be leaving which made the president give in and deny Denner the contract. Therefore, it was somewhat brilliant even though it was morally dubious, and it benefited Portuguesa. In a Paulist championship game shortly after that deal was signed, Denner took off from deep, dribbled past half the team and scored what is still regarded as the best goal in the club's history. But as soon as it happened, one of his buddies gave him a strange look and questioned, what on earth have you just done? Denner just answered, stop acting stupid. I score goals like this every training session, in response, and after demonstrating that with numerous more memorable performances, the national team called. Denner was so eager to make his debut that he accidentally ran onto the pitch before the other player had emerged, being asked to repeat the entire procedure by the referee. But even those antics didn't deter him from his objective. Even though he was only given six minutes on the pitch, he took charge, dropped deep, and launched the counterattack that gave Brazil a point. After hurting himself while attempting to perform wheelies on his motorbike, Denner missed one of the season's most important games and the media started harassing him. Which only got worse when Denner was held accountable for Brazil's under-23 team's failure to qualify for the Olympics. Even though Denner was treated unfairly, it was also evidence of his greatness because he was the main man on the squad with players like Cafu and Roberto Carlos. 
How dinner prove EV are you wanting wrong? Don't get me wrong though, the media did, in a way, sort of make a point. He thought that if he had a game the next day, getting three hours of sleep was more than enough, as his aunt reportedly stated. However, the fact remains that Denner felt it was sufficient. There was once an occasion the day before a game against Santos when nobody could locate him. A few hours before the game, the manager turned up as if nothing had occurred, which alarmed everyone. The manager had already started preparing a new game plan to make up for his absence. It seemed as though he hadn't even arrived when he entered the match. As one of his teammates remarked, I was sure that was it, we were going to get trashed 8-0 by Santos. They were behind 2-0 at the end of the first half. But in the locker room, the manager lost it, accusing Denner of being responsible for everything and finally threatening to substitute him. However, Denner turned to face him at that very moment and said, I'm not coming off, I'm going into that pitch, and I am the one who says when that match is over. The locker room fell silent as soon as he finished speaking, and everyone sensed that something significant was going to happen. After around 30 minutes, Denner had beaten Portuguesa 3-2, although it wasn't enough. Then he received the ball, dribbled the keeper, put it between the first defender's legs, surpassed the second one in a sprint, and slotted it in. When the final whistle blew, he turned to face his teammates and declared, I said what I said. I am Denner. It was a work of art. Everyone needs to know that my name is Denner. Stated differently, he desired for them to recognize him as himself. However, these kinds of achievements were insufficient to deflect attention from how Denner's bad boy character helped him become the most expensive player in Brazil. He allegedly intended to stab one of his teammates, and during the following year, he was found concealing a knife in his sock when he drove up to training in a car full of gunshot holes. He was referred to as a brilliant vagabond by one newspaper. He had become one of the most notorious players in the nation, and despite playing the players like two-time World Cup winner Peep, he lost his spot on the national team because of this. It was said of him that he deserves more chances. In terms of raw talent, no player ever got this close to Pelé. It was now more obvious than ever that Denner needed to get his act together, and leaving his hometown and his old acquaintances behind was the first step in that direction. He thus spoke with Grêmio, who had been hoping to sign for years but was unable to pay him, and they arranged a three-month loan. Everything went amazingly well, they even won the Gacho Championship, but Denner's reputation grew even further, and by the time he returned to Portuguesa, they were in the same situation as well. They couldn't afford him, and his contract was about to expire. It was getting to a point where he almost earned more by himself than all of his teammates put together, the president would later say. We were becoming so desperate that it once suggested naming the stadium after him half-jokingly, half-seriously. All of this would belong to him. We concluded that we couldn't hold him here for very long. And this is when Denner made a foolish little suggestion that fundamentally altered the course of his life. Denner stated that he would consent to a contract extension provided the team could secure a Mitsubishi Eclipse for him as a sign-on bonus. Although this may seem like a little request now, buying an automobile was like trying to find a needle in a haystack back then because of how difficult it was to import cars into Brazil due to very severe rules. There were very few cars in the nation when Denner acquired it. People recognized who it was because of the Denner 10 license plate painted in pure white everywhere he drove his spaceship, as he liked to call it. They had no idea that he had just executed himself. But even though everything was taking place in Sao Paulo, there was another event going on. The decision that sealed his destiny in Rio de Janeiro and changed his life forever after serving as the football director for the Brazilian national team for 40 years, Yuriko Miranda won the Copa America in 1989. But a year later, he was already on his way out. The issue was straightforward. He refused to resign from his role as vice president of Vasco da Gama. Simultaneously, Atletico fired manager Jair Pereira, who had guided Brazil to two under-20 World Cups, following a minor altercation with the president. And it was at this precise moment that Yuriko Miranda came up to him, attempting to sign him and asking, Jair, would you like to be champions with me? Jair answered, yeah, I'll make you a champion, in response. Denner, I just have one request to make. This is when Yuriko's eyes grew wide. He was genuinely shocked. His initial recommendation was going to be to sign Denner. And as you can imagine, joining them at Vasco was the ideal option for Denner, who was eager to make amends and guarantee a spot in the 1994 World Cup. Joining one of the top teams in Brazil gave him exposure, but he was also able to distance himself from his community, improve his reputation, and grant the wishes of two powerful individuals over the national team. He was doing the right thing for once, or at least that was everyone's perception. Denner was so excited about training on the first day that he ran around the pitch as soon as Jair asked the players to start the session. He went so fast that he slipped, fell, hit his head on the ground, and passed out, much to the amusement of his new teammates. In any case, this overenthusiasm translated well onto the pitch. When Maradona was destroyed by Denner, you inquire as to how well, let's just say that his career's most memorable game was likely his debut versus Newell's old boys. 
Maradona should have been the center of attention that day since it was his first game back following a few months of injury. But Denner had other ideas. After six minutes, Denner got the ball and moved past players one, two, three, four, and five, narrowly missing the objective. Maradona was shaking his head in shock that early in the game, and Denner didn't stop working until he was replaced. Denner was so amazing that the next day he was featured on the cover of all the newspapers in Argentina. However, nothing was more stunning than when Maradona stormed into the Vasco squad's locker room and demanded to see the kid. Maradona desired to give him a handshake. I don't believe a greater endorsement exists than that. Denner simply kept shoving it in his friend's faces as soon as Diego departed, asking, Did Maradona ever ask to meet you? Not sure about that. When his friend Ricardo Rocha joined Newell's three years later, the myth about the little child who taught Maradona the ropes persisted even after that. It seemed particularly odd that his most memorable game would be a goalless one. The moment Diego left, Denner just kept rubbing it on his friend's faces. Did Maradona ever ask to meet you? I'm not sure about that. When his friend Ricardo Rocha joined Newell's three years later, the myth about the little child who taught Maradona the ropes persisted even after that. The irony was that his most memorable game would ultimately be a goalless one. Denner, after all, gained notoriety for stating that there are moments when the dribble is more beautiful than the goal. Nevertheless, Denner was experiencing some of his best play to date during the next several months at Vasco, to the extent that by the end, the supporters were screaming, it's Cafume, it's Cafune. Denner is a mix of Garincha and Pele. Brazil's greatest wonder kid died too soon, but nobody knew at the time that Denner was going through one of the lowest points in his life during that time. Denner never really got married to their mother, even though he had three children and supported her financially almost as if she were his wife. He was also upfront about the fact that he was seeing other people. Additionally, his fiancée at the time died after being hit by a car during a carnival, just one month after they arrived in Vasco. Nonetheless, two months later, his performances secured him his first flight to Europe, regardless of his emotional state at the time. Denner would sign a $3 million contract with Stuttgart at the end of the season. Sadly, though, that transfer would never happen. Just three days after he signed the contract and 16 days after turning 23, Denner, who had returned to Sao Paulo for the discussions, decided at midnight that he had to return to Rio right away. Despite having a plane ticket for the following morning, he wouldn't abandon his well-known Mitsubishi Eclipse in Sao Paulo. Thus, he was exhausted and had a five-hour journey ahead of him. So it didn't matter how much his family insisted they spend the night. Three months prior, Denner had made the acquaintance of Otto Miranda, an arms dealer with a criminal record, a purported drug dealer, and a close friend of Romorio and Edmundo. Once more, Denner chose his buddies carefully and asked Otto to travel to Sao Paulo with him. Otto insisted repeatedly that day that they may alternate sleeping while one drives the automobile, and so it was regardless of what Denner's family said. Before departing, Denner grabbed his phone and gave a call to one of his closest pals, Ed Inho, who plays goalkeeping for Santos and is also Pella's son. The two had connected in a youth match some seven years prior. After Denner overcame Ed Inho to score, the two had a talk and went out to eat pizza, and soon after, Denner became close. However, that day, when Denner called, he seemed strange, but he kept telling Ed Inho how much he loved him. Even now, Ed Inho maintains that Denner had to be aware of what was going to happen. However, Otto fell asleep at the wheel at 5 a.m. already in Rio de Janeiro and only 20 minutes from Denner's residence, losing control of the vehicle and crashing into a tree. Otto only had two broken legs, but regrettably, they were only traveling at about 40 miles per hour. Because Denner had pulled his seat back too much, the seatbelt choked him upon contact, causing his larynx to hemorrhage and eventually choking on his blood. The paramedics arrived at the scene before the cameras did, for some reason. Everyone in Brazil would see the pictures of Denner lying there with newspapers covering his face. Ayrton Senna passed away 13 days later as well. And that quickly turned into the most sorrowful month in Brazilian sports history. Even more disheartening, his family had to fight for years in court before they were able to get the $3 million that their life insurance company owed them. Vasco had never really submitted the paperwork since, while well, nobody passed away at 23. To add to the strangeness of it all, several months later, Otto was killed.